All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Compound Interesting. This is Emil, and today's video, we're having a look at Tesla and why I believe Tesla will have the most valuable brand in the world in maybe a decade's time. So currently, Apple have the most valuable brand in the world. So I want to compare Apple and Tesla and see how Apple got to this position to have the most valuable brand. So their the value of their brand is like 200 billion. The only physical or tangible or thing that we can really think about in regards to Apple's brand is their logo and their name. So why is this worth 200 billion? Well, it's because people are willing to queue up for six hours at a time to get the newest iPhone and they, they could never imagine using any other computer apart from a Mac and the following that Apple has. That's what's really worth 200 billion, the emotional connection to the Apple name. So why do I want to compare Apple to Tesla? Well, I believe that Tesla is in a very similar position to what Apple was in maybe 10 years ago, about 2007 is when Apple really started to, well, a long time ago, Apple started to take off, but Apple's shift in branding really started in 2007, and I'll explain exactly why. So there's one thing in 2007 that Apple did that com completely changed the trajectory of Apple's company. And about two years ago, Tesla also committed a similar change in their business. So what that is, is Apple in 2007 changed the name of their company, which essentially doesn't really mean anything. Like the name of a company doesn't really mean anything, but the original name of Apple was instead of, it's currently Apple Inc. And it used to be Apple Computer Inc. So essentially what Apple did, they stopped branding themselves as a computer company and now have branded themselves as Apple. So why did Apple do that? Well, obviously, with the release of the iPhone, they were no longer just a computer company and Apple didn't want to be linked to just being able to make computers. So you're not going to buy a Dell phone or you're not going to buy, you know, a HP phone, but you're more than willing to buy an Apple iPhone, an Apple computer, Apple earphones, Apple music, iTunes. And there's just so many things in Apple's ecosystem that everyone believes in because Apple isn't Apple computers, it's Apple. And I'll explain more how they managed to build that brand. But I want to quickly compare that change that Tes or that Apple implemented in 2007 with a change that Tesla made a couple of years ago. So Tesla's mission statement took an enormous change over the years. So Tesla's original mission statement was to become the most compelling electric car company. Well, if you ask me, that mission statement isn't very compelling. And similarly, Apple, the name Apple Computer isn't as compelling either. However, Tesla made two more changes. So they went from become the most compelling electric car company, then they changed the mission statement to accelerate sustainable transport, which is much more compelling. I actually think it's sort of slightly sad that it is the first production electric car of the modern era and that there are not more electric cars on the road. The reason I put so much time and effort and money into helping create Tesla is to serve as a catalyst for the car industry, to help serve as a good example and to drive things faster towards electric vehicles, towards sustainable transport. It just seemed like there was no choice, you know, either, either we did it and uh, served as an example or we'd be just waiting year after year for the car companies to do something. But finally they changed the game because of the, their shift in business model, so I'll explain everything. But they're now updated, finalized mission statement is to accelerate the world's tra transition to sustainable energy. And I personally believe this is the most compelling mission statement of any company in the entire world. It has such deep consequences for our planet and for the human race and civilization. Uh, anyone who identifies as eco-friendly resonates immediately with that mission statement or anyone who cares about the human race or the planet at all resonates immediately with that mission statement. And similarly, Apple's mission statement is think different. That's their mission statement. So that's Apple's mission statement, think different. And a lot of people don't like to fit in with the status quo. So that's the way Apple created their brand. Their brand is about not being part of the status quo. Whereas every other computer manufacturer was creating computers for people in suits and all their advertising would be people in suits or office people. Whereas Apple's was you know, just for the regular person, for the artist, for the creator. I'll talk about more about that in a minute, but let me just go get back to the consequences of Tesla's shift in mission statement. 
So firstly, yeah, that's such a compelling mission statement, the, the acceleration towards sustainable energy, but also the change in um, transitioning the world to sustainable transport, the change from that to sustainable energy also has huge implications for Tesla. It means that it's not just a car company anymore or a transport company. Now it's an energy company. Now it's a battery company. Now it's a robo taxi company. Now it's a air conditioning company. Now it's an energy company. Now it's a battery company. Now it's a solar company. Now it's a transport company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all within this amazing ecosystem where the roof of your house powers the battery in your car, which powers your house as well. And your car earns you money as a robo taxi and the extra energy from Tesla solar business can be stored in your electric car's battery and sold back to the grid, which helps sustainable energy. I have a full video on that here. I'll link it up here. Um, I recommend you watch that. It's really, really interesting uh, about Tesla being able to sell energy from your car back into the grid. So taking in cheap electricity during the day when there's a lot of sun and then selling it back to the grid at night when it's very expensive. But anyway, let's move on. So you can see the similarity between Tesla and Apple. Apple have created this amazing ecosystem of products that are all integrated so well with each other, the way your iPhone can airdrop to your Mac and your earphones connect to your, your AirPods connect to your iPhone and your iTunes syncs up with your iPhone and your Apple Music is on your iPhone or on your Mac or whatever. And it's just a really easy to use ecosystem and using any foreign objects is weird in that ecosystem. Similarly, Tesla are kind of on the cusp of that at the moment. They're releasing more and more features that aren't car company stuff whatsoever. However, because Tesla, Tesla's mission statement has changed so much from being just a car, a compelling car, electric car company to now accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. So this mission statement has created a complete cult following for Tesla in the same way that Apple has a cult following. And that cult following was created from the mission statement. That cult following isn't about, yeah, Tesla have amazing products. Apple have amazing products. Don't get me wrong. The products are really, really good. But anyone, well, maybe not in Tesla's case, but there are so many other smartphones with the same techn technological abilities as an iPhone. However, everyone still buys an iPhone or it's still the best selling one. And the reason for that is emotional. It's not logical, it's not rational. And the same way for Tesla, even though Tesla does definitely have the best electric car on the market at the moment, without a doubt, in the future, all the other, all the other car manufacturers will catch up. However, Tesla already has that cult following. So yeah, as I said, I believe Tesla has the most compelling mission statement in the world. But here are some of the other great mission statements of the top companies in the world. And as you can see, all the biggest companies with the best brand followings all have a really compelling mission statement. So this mission statement doesn't just mean that your customers are going to follow you to the grave or will buy all your products or will line up for your products or will pre-order your products two years before and give you any amount of money you need and do whatever it takes and give you feedback on all your items as soon as possible. It also means your staff is going to do everything they can in their ability. They're not working for just a paycheck. The staff are working for more than a paycheck. So that produces better products. So that's what Tesla has. That's some of the branding power that Tesla has and Elon Musk has managed to create. And Tesla doesn't have to spend any money on advertising. The cult following advertises for them. The customer advertises for Tesla. Anyone who buys a Tesla will tell all his friends about the Tesla and all the cool things it can do. But the real reason they're telling them, they're not like, oh, it's really cool because it has X, Y, and Z tech spec or this feature. The real reason in their brain, the, psycholo the psychological reason that they're doing that is because they agree with the mission statement of Tesla. In my opinion, I think the reason anyone, everyone loves Tesla is because of the mission statement and not just because of the specs of the car. Oh, it's cool because it's the safest car and it has a computer in the car and it has the best air conditioning in, the, in any car in the world. Which, all those things are true, but that's only the reason people rationalize why they like the car so much. The real reason is deeper. It's fundamental. It's inside. It's your gut feeling towards the car 
and it's because of the mission statement. It's because it's electric it's, and it's because of what Tesla represents. It's not because of what Tesla cars do. So that's why all these YouTubers are so happy to endorse Tesla's products and all the customers want to help Tesla succeed and everyone wants to invest in Tesla or give Elon Musk money and more funding to make this dream a reality. Okay, so now I wanna just do a couple more comparisons to Apple and what Tesla could steal from Apple or what Apple have done in the past and they're pretty much genius tactics that Tesla employs to brand their vehicles. So firstly, Tesla and Apple both have eccentric CEOs and absolutely ruthless CEOs. Both Elon Musk and Steve Jobs were known to fire people, anyone who wasn't working perfectly efficiently or wasn't 100% invested in the company, you're gone. And the reason they're so ruthless is because their their dream is more than just making money for their company. They don't just they don't care just about making the most money for the company. It's much much more than that. And that's why these two men are so ruthless in their companies, asking so much of their employer employees and getting so much from their employees. They both have amazing vis vision and were completely unconventional. Uh, Apple kind of seems conventional conventional now, but at the time, a computer company that was kind of focused towards the everyday person was very unconventional. One thing that Steve Jobs brought to Apple that maybe Tesla lacks a little bit is the lack in focus in specifications. So a lot of mobile phone companies or computer companies back in the day would say, oh, this computer is the best because it has 64 gigabytes and, and a 12 megapixel camera and two giga gigabytes of RAM, but no one really knew what that meant. And then Steve Jobs comes along and says, 1,000 songs in your pocket and introduce the iPod. 1,000 songs in your pocket. That's something you can understand and resonate with much more than eight gigabytes of memory, which means the same thing. It means 1,000 songs in your pocket. But which, which one do you think was more compelling for a potential customer? So I think Tesla could copy a bit from this. Because Tesla's specifications are so crazy, they do sell well, but Tesla needs to work more on selling the emotional side of a Tesla rather than just the specifications. Another thing that Tesla does do definitely, but maybe not to the same degree that Apple did, is to focus on aesthetics. iPhones, Macs, they all look the exact same and they all look absolutely beautiful. There's there's just a extreme difference in design from Apple products and competing products at the time. Now Tesla does have very aesthetic pro products, but personally I think they could be a little bit more aesthetic or maybe going down the Cybertruck route was a would be a better idea and going and carving out your own path of what a product should look like or what a car should look like or what transport should look look like i think the cyber truck might be a more even though it's completely even though it's completely unconventional to what a car looks like now i think maybe in the future that could become the norm so if they have a cyber lineup in the future where there's a cyber family car and a cyber suv and a, a cyber sedan that all kind of give that sharp, futuristic look. That could be the new look for transport. Or, I don't know, that's just a suggestion. I'm sure they'll do fine without those two suggestions, but maybe that's something that Apple has an advantage over Tesla of. The final comparison with Apple is Tesla actually copied Apple's store layout. Basically, the man who designed the Apple store, which is really clear, there's only like a few MacBooks around and a few, a few Mac, computers and a few iPhones on the wall. There's not thousands of products shoved in. Everything is really clean, spacious and efficient and well lit and white and clean. And the same person who designed the Apple stores designed the Tesla stores. So Tesla got the same guy, I forget his name, but Tesla employed him to design the Tesla stores and you can see the similarity within the two stores. Now this is a completely unconventional way to sell cars. They sell them in supermarket, or sorry, in shopping malls or shopping centers where people are already shopping for other stuff. They're not shopping for a car, but then they pass the Tesla's shop. So they might as well look, go in, look around and that kind of spark their interest in Tesla when they read all the stuff about it or when someone talks to them about it, or maybe when they even take a Tesla out for a test drive. Some other branding genius from Elon Musk is like, for example, they don't spend any 
money on traditional advertising. Not even social media advertising, nothing. So all their advertising is really unconventional, like sending a Tesla to space. They, they sent, if you don't know, Elon Musk put a Tesla into space and it's now orbiting Earth. Even the other day when SpaceX launched the first humans into orbit by a private company, the astronauts were taken from the building to the spaceship in a Tesla Model X. So anyone who was watching the SpaceX mission saw the Tesla Model X and the astronauts getting, getting into the Model X. So these are just clever ways to get advertising that Elon Musk is using to advertise the Tesla cars. And Elon Musk also likes to use humor. So like, so there is the Easter egg of Tesla vehicles, the names of them spelling out sexy cars, as well as like Elon Musk having 30 million followers, followers on Twitter often uses humor uh, just to advance his brand image. Like the 420 tweet that was really famous back in the day. He's not afraid to just be himself and tweet things. And that's a huge advantage. Elon often replies to customers who suggest improvements for a Tesla. Elon Musk will often personally respond to people using Twitter. He's not too good for that. He'll respond to customers and critics. And he's built this amazing brand for himself and uses that brand to sell the Tesla brand and the mission statement. All right, that's everything I wanted to say about Tesla and all right, so that's everything I wanted to say about Tesla's brand and its comparison to Apple maybe 10 years ago. So the ideas in this video about people, about why people buy products and why branding or how effective branding works is from the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. So I'll leave that in the description. It's pretty interesting if you want. So I'm trying to bring you content that hasn't just been regurgitated from other YouTube videos. I want to pass on knowledge that I've accumulated from different topics like psychology in this instance and how that can be effectively used for investing. So if that interests you, make sure to subscribe. If you like the video, I hugely, hugely appreciate you smash the thumbs up button, help this channel get off the ground. If you enjoyed and you think someone else might enjoy this, make sure to share it, turn on the notification bell. And with all that said, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers.